Hello Inform Crows, I'm John from the Haunt Informer, and today I'm going to be giving you my review of Pure Terrace Screen Park, which is located in Monroe, New York, and is home to 13 attractions. So I'm telling you about my experience at Pure Terrace Screen Park, located in Monroe, New York. I had a really good time, really detailed sets, great actors, and just really good ambiance with all props and everything they have. Really impressive. So I was a VIP holder. I bought a VIP ticket online. I definitely recommend buying online because it's really easy. You just do it through their ticketing service. Super easy. Pay with your credit card and you're good. So I like that. And you get a laminate in person on the back. It tells you the rules and all that good stuff. And I've seen people on social media have different pictures on there. So I think they change it up, which is fun. It's green lanyard here. So lots of fun here. So I really enjoyed that. That obviously tells everybody you're the VIP holder and that's a memento. So I'm definitely going to keep this and add it to my set after this video. You'll see it hanging up here. And because you're VIP, you get access to the VIP admission line. So when you are approaching Pure Terra Screen Park, they have this lighted path where you follow the fence and you keep on going and it'll tell you the right way to go. And there's a general mission sign and a VIP sign. I went to the VIP obviously. And either way, you go around this really cool fountain they have custom built. It's beautiful with this really nice Pure Terra Screen Park custom sign. Pure Terra Screen Park has a lot of really good quality signs from the Cyclone sign. So shout out to them. They did an excellent job. So past the cool fountain, you keep on going and the VIP line goes a special way and has its own special entrance and they have the signs up there to make sure you know where you're going and then you go right into security and you bypass a whole bunch of different lines for general mission and it bypasses you right past that and they have these wall panels of all these skeletons and corpses all over the wall. And you see that and you end up going into that main holding area where General Mission zigzags a bunch. VIP just goes straight into it, one little curve to the right, and you are in. And it didn't take that long, honestly. I'd say we waited maybe 10 minutes, really not that much. So VIP definitely helped. It was a busy night. Lots of people were there to have fun and get scared. So I am very happy I got that. Definitely streamlined the experience. So that whole area of waiting in to go into the first attraction, the crypt is totally themed out. They got prop bats around you and they have a sign for the crypt and you see there's a bat from Beastcraft and it looks like it's moving around eating something and there's a giant bat in there as well like monsters and it's really neat and they have it lit up with all the chandeliers and it looks really nice. I really like that theming. Definitely gets you into it before you even go in. And I was grouped up with two people, a very nice couple. Thank you for going through with the attraction with me. We had a great time, taking our time, looking at everything. And at no point were we bunched up with another group. At no point was there a group right behind us, forcing us to run through the attraction. Were no one in front of us. We really just had a great time just going through the whole thing pretty much by ourselves. And I really love that. Couldn't have been a better experience, honestly. Really love that spacing, so they did a very good job with that. Really enjoyed that. So the first attraction, the crypt, you go right in, and it's very dark and twisty, and you see lots of really good quality props from Original Sin Design of their vampires. Very bloody, very gory, very over the top, very realistic. Excellent work by Anthony, like normal. He always does an excellent job with his props. And you're very immersed immediately, and there's vampires coming after you, and I really enjoyed that attraction. And that seamlessly takes you into the second one, which is called Resurrection Cemetery. And this one has aggressive zombie scare actors in there. And at one point, there's an outdoor area and then takes you inside. And in that outdoor area, shout out to Han Supply, they had multiple archways and mausoleums you walk through made by them. So that was neat. I actually saw those at East Coast Haunters Convention. Pure Terror got those 
and put it into the traction and they worked really well. Really good quality theming there. I actually got legitimately star scared at one point because the zombie character just completely just rushed right at me and growled at me. Didn't expect that. I just made a turn. All of a sudden, he was right there running at me. Really good job. Shout out to that zombie scare actor. Did a great job. So after the cemetery, you go into the attraction called Jungle Rot. And this is one of the attractions I was really looking forward to because I was expecting the theme to be really good quality and just be really immersive. And it was. Really enjoyed it. Lots of cool effects in there. Really effective uses of the death whistles really good scares definitely scared the lady in my group mobile times one scare actor scared her mobile times with death whistle scares so that was awesome really good quality prop from unit 70 studios where it looks like a man is being eaten by this massive snake so that was really neat that was really cool so really good quality thing in there you really do feel like you're in a jungle proper sound effects all the actors had proper outfits on and it turned out really nice i really enjoyed that attraction And after that, it takes you to the Woods of the Dead. And this was all about werewolves and creatures coming after you. Mobile times you see werewolves. Really good quality masks and gloves. with The claws and everything looks really good. Really good quality props of werewolves. And you never know where they're going to come from. And sometimes you see them eating prop bodies. And that was a really neat attraction. I like that one. That classic werewolf feel and creatures coming after you. So that definitely was a cool theme. go to one of the most detailed attractions at Pure Terror Screen Park, which is the Bedlam State Asylum. I absolutely love this attraction. You go up to this beautiful facade of an asylum, and right off the bat, there's a scare actor messing with you. That's one of the patients, and you go in, custom sign from Cyclone Signs saying that, Bedlam State Asylum, with a flickering light effect, and you turn a corner, and from the very beginning to the very end, there are so many good quality sets in here properly distressed and detailed really really well done i loved all the props from ghost ride productions original sin design there was custom prop pieces by dembski creations and there was just so many props in there props from rib effects so many good quality props in there and they were very well placed they weren't just randomly placed in the traction they're well thought out and they had mobile scenes planned out with these props i really like the incineration room where they had a bunch of these props from Ghost Ride of charred corpses all over the walls. And there was a prop incinerator and a scare actor in there was saying that she was going to put you in there. And that was really aggressive. I really loved that scene. And I loved that whole like winding, twisting hallway of all the prop bodies from Rib Effects. That was very intentional and very gory and disturbing where some of them had tubes coming out of their bodies. And one of the props from Rib Effects is particularly disgusting because it looks like there's a tube coming from his stomach and he's like, putting in his mouth like he's eating his own stomach bile and that's disgusting really off-putting and that's perfect distraction for the patient scare actors in there to really scare you and get you really good so i really enjoyed that really well themed really good quality sets excellent props in there and the scare actors had tons of energy i love their energy and one of the best skit lines i heard from the night was at first one of the scare actors was one of the patients said that she wanted our help she wanted us to get the doctor for her and that's a classic skit line you hear, but then she elaborated upon it because then we talked to her and I liked her improv because then we talked to her and said, oh, we'll try to help you. What do you need? And then she said, well, I really want the doctor because I want to find brains. I really want your brain. And then I was like, you're not getting my brain. She's like, oh, yeah, I am. And I was like, no, you're not. And she like chased after us. And that was really fun. So definitely lots of aggressive scare acting in there. Definitely cool animatronics from Unit 70 Studios as well. At one point, you saw the animatronic where it's a prop, but it's animated with the pneumatics, and it looks like he is drilling into this female patient's head, and then she pops up as a style scare. That was really neat to see. You don't see that animatronic often. So the next attraction you go to after the asylum is the Terror in the Dark attraction, and that one is your classic dark maze where you have to feel your way out. All the walls are painted black, and you have to feel your way out of there. At points, there's like lighting effects for like scare effects with actors. There aren't that many actors in here because they're trying to make it like feel like you're alone and fully immersed in the darkness. And there's some loud heavy metal playing. I think it was a little too loud. They could have turned it down a little bit, but it definitely was messing with your senses. Like you can't see. And sometimes, a couple times, there was different textures in the walls. But I definitely think they could add some more textures in the walls, add a couple more actors. And I definitely like the animatronic effects that were in there from Poison Props. So like zombies 
rattling bars. So that was cool. So overall, I think they could add some more to that dark maze and make it more immersive. But overall, I had a pretty good time in there. Definitely think the volume was a little too loud. But overall, it was a good time. Classic dark maze. I was the leader of the group and we found our way out of there. So after the Terror and the Dark attraction, we went to the Psycho Circus, and this was definitely one of my favorite attractions of the night. It was one of the longest attractions you went through. It was very elaborate, very twisty and turny. I loved the approach to the attraction with all of these signs talking about different sideshow characters like a sword swallower and all the different things you could see like conjoined twins and all those cool signs. I love that immersion where just walking up to it, you see all those signs and you really feel like you're going to a carnival. Custom signs saying the Psycho Circus with the logo with it, with good quality immortal masks, mask on there with the logo, and you go right into the traction. From the very beginning, you're disoriented because the first couple rooms, the floor is tilted. So you walk right in and the floor is tilted one way and then it tilts another way. So right off the bat, you're disoriented. I love it when they mess with the floors, so that's very effective. Really good quality. Really good quality artwork in here done by Stuart. So shout out to Stuart, you did a great job. And it's very whimsical, very over the top. I love the scare actors in here. Lots of good scare spots, ranging from drop panels to door scares to curtain scares. Coming from the side, statue scares. Some of the best statue scares I've seen attraction ever. You really, really couldn't tell it was a scare actor. They looked exactly like the props. Really good quality masks and costumes. Standing perfectly still. You cannot tell they are an actor. And then all of a sudden they came at us and were very aggressive and really good quality. Excellent statue scares in there. And the actors in there were having a great time. Really good quality laughs and being very whimsical and messing with us. And I love the scare actors that had the mask on with the cupcakes on the top from Pumpkin Pulp Productions. I never actually saw that mask being used in attraction before, so that was fun to see. And she had excellent energy. Really liked that. So excellent scare acting, really good quality props. I like the custom archway they had built from Ghost Ride where you have to walk under the coattails of mobile clowns like holding each other up. I absolutely love that attraction. Really enjoyed it. I like that it was a longer attraction because you get fully immersed into that circus and you see lots of different themes and lots of different clowns and different variations and sometimes it's claustrophobic hallways and sometimes the scenes are more open and give you that false sense of security and overall I really enjoyed that attraction. you will go to Desecration. And this is one of the attractions I was looking forward to, seeing the promotional videos on their website because it looked very detailed. And it was. It was incredibly detailed. And from the very beginning, you see this massive facade of this cathedral with mobile monks in front of it. And from just the very beginning, you are fully immersed into this attraction. And you see prop monks in there with candles, like LED candles they're holding. So it's completely safe, fire safe. It just looks really cool. And you're going through weaving in and out of these dark passageways and at one point you walk past mobile pews and it takes you up to this evil priest and you don't know if he's a prop or real and he stall scared us he did a great job custom mask from pumpkin pulp productions and all the characters in there were very aggressive and mobile point scare actors were calling us sinners and telling us to get out of there and i really liked it and something i saw in this attraction i have not seen other attractions was they had pews on their side so they made a maze out of pews on their side so the walls of this maze were pews so that was really interesting hadn't seen that before good job very innovative had not seen that at any other traction before a maze of pews so that was very interesting hadn't seen that before really good quality props in here and i really like the props which i actually own one of them from haunt supply of the sheet ghost covered in fake blood i really like that they had some of those in there they also got that at East Coast Harness Convention and then put them in this attraction. You had to go past them at one point. It was very unsettling and creepy. So excellent scare acting in there, ranging from all the demonic priests and priestesses and all the evil followers and monks in there. Very aggressive scare acting, really good timing. They got us mobile times. I was still scared at least once in there, maybe twice, mobile times and definitely scaring all of us in the group and we had a great time. I really enjoyed it. They targeted the middle of the group, the front of the group, and the back of the group. They messed with all of us, so really enjoyed that. Excellent scare acting, very detailed. Loved all the props in there. Incredibly detailed props from Ghost Art Productions, uh, priests and priestesses in there, and it was very immersive. I really enjoyed that attraction. 
So after Desecration, you go outside to Camp Kilmore. And Camp Kilmore is an homage to Jason Voorhees, and I think they did an excellent job. This is definitely one of the best tributes to Jason Voorhees I have seen. From the very beginning, you're fully immersed with going into a cabin where the counselors are staying, and Jason has completely killed all these counselors. All the bunks are covered in prop bodies of counselors. Sitting in front of you is a counselor that was killed, and you have to weave your way past these bunk beds with all these prop bodies on it from Ghost Ride, and they're very detailed. And Jason comes out of the screen door and is aggressively chasing after you, and he stares you down, and this scare actor was so tall he could see over the bunks, so excellent casting there. Totally immersed in his character, not saying a word, just creeping after us and staring us down, and I loved his energy. He did a great job. And the lady in my group really liked Jason and was like, oh, Jason, definitely kill for mother, and she was like all into it, and Jason did not break character. He stayed in character and just stared us all down, and like I said, he's so tall he could see over the bunks. Multiple times throughout this attraction, you'll see lots of props of Jason Voorhees covered in fake blood, so you don't know if it's real or not, so you really have that constant feeling of uneasiness like... Is that real? Is that fake? So I really like that. You have to go past a boat at one point, so that's really cool. I like that, and they had a creepy guy there that looked like he was manning the boat, and at one point you actually had to walk into a bus starting from the back of the bus, and you walk through there, and there's mobile dead counselors in there. And at the very front, there was a bus driver, so shout out to that scare actor, and he was listening to Elvis, and you could see some albums up there near the front. And this character was totally in character, loved his makeup, great outfit. Looked exactly like a classic bus driver, and he was warning us about Jason, and we shouldn't be here, and one of the people in my group said they missed Elvis, and he said, I do too, and he's totally in character because he was listening to Elvis, and I really like that scene. It's a good mix of the disturbing elements with the dead counselors, and then the Elvis, and the startle scare, and that was really great, and he opened the door for us, and then we went out and kept on going through the traction, so, and at one point we saw Jason again, went to this like really grungy gross like basement kind of feel very gritty like dirt on the ground you're walking past and you see more prop bodies of from ghost ride of these council that have been killed from jason Voorhees, and you go past and then he comes after you and that was really good i really like that one of my favorite attractions they are for sure excellent homage to jason Voorhees. after that is their own original take on Freddy Krueger, and it's called Nightmare Factory, so it does not follow the canon of the movies. At points, you do see Freddy Krueger-looking characters, but it definitely is not the same. At one point, you see the custom cryopods from Dembski Creations, shout out Dembski Creations, and you see those, and they are very cool, very well done with the video effects on there, very interesting, but it looks like with the backstory of this, this is my interpretation solely, not the website, this is what I think, that in this interpretation of Freddy Krueger, he is taking people and putting them in these pods and making it so they're stuck in there and then they constantly are thinking about their dreams. Like they can't escape. They can't take the hypnosil. They can't drink coffee. They can't be awake. So they're constantly having nightmares. That was an interesting take on it. Hadn't seen that before. Definitely was different. You saw a prop of Freddy Krueger at one point and near the end you do see the scare actor portraying him and he said, welcome to my nightmare and he came after us. So that was a fun attraction. I definitely think that was one of the shorter attractions of the night, but I definitely did enjoy the immersion in there and the boiler room and it was very detailed. So definitely a cool attraction. The last haunt attraction you go through at Pure Terror that has scare actors in it is called The Legends of Horror. This is an homage to other characters. The whole attraction starts with a facade that looks like the It House from the 2017 movie, which is fun. And the numbers say 666, but one of the numbers broke off, so it's like 66. So that's cool. It's like grungy and demented and everything. And you go in, there's lots of different scenes. You get to see Reagan, so there's like a whole exorcist scene, and you hear the soundtrack of the demon talking to you, and then you experience Reagan. There's like a possession, like an animatronic of a possessed girl like shaking on this bed from Unit 70, and it looks really good. Very immersive with all those sound effects. You almost never get to see Ghostface in Haunted Attractions, but you did in this attraction. You see this prop body of this girl that's been stabbed, and then he comes right after you, and very aggressive scare acting. Really enjoyed that. 
and there was an awesome Michael Myers in there. He was very aggressive, very tall and imposing, came after us. So I really liked the aggression of the scare actor portraying Michael Myers. He was a tall scare actor. He was stalking after us, and I liked that he could come out of the scare spot mobile times and scare you from mobile points. So that was really great. And I also want to mention in the Ghostface area, you could hear the soundtrack of Ghostface actually calling someone on the phone. So that was really nice. That was a nice touch. And I really enjoyed the Leatherface scene. The Maws 2 Leatherface with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was near the end of the attraction. That's how the attraction ended. I love that banquet scene where you go in. It looks like there's this whole dining room completely decked out. These prop bodies. And it looks like they're eating people like because they're cannibals in the movie. These prop bodies of like all these gross foods and these bowls. And then there's dead bodies everywhere. And at points you see props of Leatherface with chainsaws. And it's very immersive and there's a scare on there and I think they take your picture during it. There's after attraction, there's a picture you can buy for like twenty dollars. There's different packages, but that the base price is twenty. And I think they take a picture of you when you get Star scared, and I did. I didn't know if there was gonna be an actor in there or not, and they got me, so definitely a fun time. And at the very end you get to see Leatherface and he has a real chainsaw and revs in and comes after you, so that was fun. I think they take your picture there too, so they take mobile pictures of you when you get scared. And that was the last attraction you go through that has scare actors in it, and they have the pictures there that you can purchase for an additional charge, like I said, $20 starting there for one picture, and they also have another one you can get a picture with where it looks like zombies are attacking you, and then just past that, you will see the start of the Monster Midway and the Pumpkin Alley, and there's lots of photo ops you can get pictures with of larger than life monsters from Unit 70. All these props are 12 to 13 foot tall, very tall and imposing. They actually have a photo op with a zombie Elvis, which is funny because they had a reference to him earlier in the haunt. So that was fun. You don't see that often. So definitely a great time. And that'll lead you into the Pumpkin Alley attraction. Really good quality custom card faux pumpkins of all kinds of horror icons and pop culture icons. I took a couple pictures of that. Really well lit, really like that. My favorite part of Pumpkin Alley was the massive pumpkin monster that's holding a kid, and he's very well lit, and they have these custom carved faux pumpkins that spell out Pure Terra Screen Park on it with skulls next to it, like the logo. After you're done with the Pumpkin Alley, it completely lets you out into the Monster Midway, and there's even more photo ops of monsters you can get pictures with that are very tall and imposing, and there's mobile food options of different food trucks of different kinds of food. There's some Mexican food, and they have some barbecue, and they have mobile options, so if you want to try those, you can. There was also a bakery vendor there, and her company was called Cakes a la Kim, cakes spelled with a K, and this is her business card, so definitely shout out to Kim. And I had one of her cake pops. It looked like an eyeball. So I thought that was cool. It was a carrot cake flavor one. And I really enjoyed it. It was very soft, very flavorful. Really enjoyed that. So definitely shout out to Kim. Definitely had a great time, got a picture with the Terrifier, the Art the Clown themed photo op as well on the bench, that was fun. And shout out to somebody for recognizing me at Pure Terror Screen Park when I was getting pictures. Someone recognized me and I gave them one of my Haunted Former stickers, so thank you very much for recognizing me and talking to me for a little bit. Thank you very much, I really appreciate that. People watch me and I can reach people even all the way in New York, so thank you very much, I really appreciate that. And then they have a lighted path to the end of the attraction back where the parking is. They have free parking there, and I had a great time. I definitely recommend going to Pure Terra Screen Park. You will be fully immersed, and you will have a great time. Excellent props, very detailed sets, really good quality, talented, 
dedicated scare actors. I got startled many times in these different attractions, and I've been through lots of them. You know, I have been following this channel, and I still got star scared quite a few times. So definitely check out Pure Terrace Screen Park. That was the Haunt Informer. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get a notification every single time I put a new video. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I am on social media and you can find all those links below. And tell me, have you been to Pure Terrace Screen Park? And are you planning on visiting in the future? Tell me all about that in the comments below. And as always, happy hauntings.